Section 1.5, video part 2. In this equation, or in this example, the, the graph shows the amount of garbage in tons that's deposited at a dump site T years after a new regulation goes into effect. Find a formula uh, for the function whose graph is G equals, G is the output, so G equals, and uh, then say what the slope and vertical intercept tell us about the problem. Um, okay. So we need two points, and the first point that we have is um, 0 0.25, okay, and then the second point is 10, 150, all right, so I've got two points out, right, now you don't have to do it by the traditional slope, uh, you could do this, you could say, okay, I'm going up, I'm going over. If I start at 25, let's see how, how much I went up in the Y. 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. So the change in Y is 125. And then the change in X happens to be 10. So there's 10 across this way. So when we do this, that would be slope is uh, 125 over 10 and that should simplify let's see let's grab my calculator 125 um, let's go clear 125 divided by 10 enter and then hit the math and hit enter and it'll turn it into a fraction be 25 over 2 so the slope yeah, the slope would be 25 over 2. Now, uh, the y-intercept happens to be 25. So we can write this 25 over 2. Um, T plus 25. Now, if I did the slope using these two points over here, I'd get the same thing as what I've done over here by just looking at the change. And it's a positive slope because it's going uphill from left to right. Now, <clears throat> say what the slope and the vertical intercept tells us about the problem. Um, for every two years, let's see, if slope is 25 over 2, and that's changing Y, and that is tons, and this is years. So it goes up 25 tons every two years. Okay, that's what the slope is telling us. The vertical end strip tells us that they started out with 25 tons to begin with. Okay, uh, that's what this tells us. 25 is time is zero. We had 25 tons already, excuse me, on the uh, dump site. All right, now let's look at this problem. The formula F equals 9 fifths C plus 32 converts the temperature from Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. What is the Fahrenheit temp temperature when it's 10 degrees Celsius? Uh, so what I'm going to do is the easiest thing to do is to just put it in your calculator. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, clear here. I'm gonna clear. So I'll go Y equals clear out that equation and I go uh, parentheses 9 divided by 5 close parentheses x plus 32 and x will be Celsius right so they ask what is the Fahrenheit when when it's 10 degrees Celsius so that's here's an input give me an output so they give me 10 so I can, if I look at my table set, I've got it on ask, right, which means I can plug in a value. <clears throat> so second graph, I want to delete all these ones that are sitting there. So I want to hit 10, hit enter. So it's 50 degrees Fahrenheit. When it's 10 degrees Celsius, it's 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's 50. Right. Now, what is the Celsius temperature when it's 2 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, we that's an output, and they want us to find an input. So what we do 
is we come over here to our calculator and we'll put that output in Y2 and it happens to be the Fahrenheit is 2 degrees what is the Celsius and <clears throat> what we want to do is graph so when I hit graph I don't have a clue of what my parameters were but I'm going to do zoom um, 6 zoom standard and what that does is it gives me a, um, a graph of negative 10 to positive 10 on the Y, negative 10 to positive 10 on the X. Now, here's something pretty cool. I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, leave my X min as negative 10, but I'm going to move my X max to 100. And then I'm going to put my step by 5. Okay. Then I'm in doing that, I'm only changing my X's, okay? I'm not going to touch my Y's, and I'll show you why in a second. So I hit graph. Okay, it didn't, didn't do it as far as it didn't show the stuff, but I'm going to do zoom. Um, zero. And it should be zoom fit. Yeah, Z zero is zoom fit. And what that does is it takes my um, X values and keeps them the same. And it'll scale my Y's to match the X's, okay? Now, if you can see at the bottom, there's a red line and then a the blue. So we went out in the positive X. We really should have went out in the negative X. So let's change it again. Hit window. and Instead of negative 10, let's hit uh, negative 30. And let's change my X max to just 30. Okay. And then hit graph again. And then I want to hit zoom zero. And what that does is it will scale it, my Y's, based off my X's that I have there. Okay. That's the really cool thing about this. Now, I would like to know that intersection right there. I'm not going to trace it. not going to do any of my... Cursors, I'm going to hit zoom, or not zoom, second trace, and I'm going to go down to number five. And number five says intersect. So what it's going to look at, it's going to say my first curve. All you have to do is hit enter. Second curve, all you have to do is hit enter. And we're not going to guess because it's a calculator. Come on. We paid for it. It better tell us something other than guess. When we hit enter, it'll tell us that it's 16.667. Or negative 16.66, negative 16.667, which is negative 16 and two thirds, right? So we're going to write here negative 16.667, okay? Now it says to graph it, and we have, we've graphed it on our calculator, okay? If you were to graph this and having to like put a point and everything, then you would start it at 32, and then you would go up 9, and over to the right 5, okay? Now, find the slope of this problem. The slope is 9 fifths, right? What is the meaning of the slope? Well, if you look at it, I think it's easier to look at it in terms of uh, 9 fifths as a decimal. 1.8 over 1, changing y over changing x. And that would be Fahrenheit for Celsius, right? Fahrenheit is what we're getting out Celsius. So for every change in Celsius, one change, Fahrenheit goes up by 1.8. Now, if you looked at it in terms of 9 fifths, you would say, <clears throat> excuse me, for every 5, change in 5 on Celsius, Fahrenheit would go up 9. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. Now, Find the find the intercepts and explain the meanings of these problems. The F intercept and the C intercept. Okay. Um, the C is nothing more than X and the F is nothing more than Y. Okay. So the Y intercept is positive 32. We know what that is. Okay. And if you remember, um, we can just we. 
I guess you could use the formulas that we talked about in part one's video, but I, I'm just old school, so I'm going to go Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths, C plus 32, uh, F's going to be 0, C intercept F is 0, 9 fifths C plus 32, and I will minus 32. So what we get is negative 32 equals 9 fifths C. And if you multiply both sides by 5 over 9, what that's going to give you is the C intercept. Because these folks will cancel out because that's 45 over 45, which is just 1. So let's come over here and... Not five knots times negative thirty-two. So let me pop out of this. Yeah, clear here. Uh, five knots negative thirty-two. Okay. Uh, print C is five divided by nine. All right. Okay. Times negative thirty-two. Uh, I grab the subtraction right there instead of the negative oh no i had two so let me do it again five divided by nine close parentheses times negative 32. all right that's negative 17.778 so negative 17.778 that would be what the c intercept is okay all right so let's look at another one um in this problem, we're going to do a couple of things, so just kind of keep in mind. England oven cooking temperature is often given as gas marks rather than degrees. So the table shows equivalent oven temperatures for various gas marks. So 3579, the corresponding gas marks respond to 325, 375, 425, 475. So if you look at this, this would be changing X, this would be changing Y. So if we go... We're going up by 2, right? And these are going up by 50. So we'd say our slope is changing Y over changing X, which is 50 over 2, which is nothing more than 25 over 1, right? So we could draw it, plot the data and draw the line, all that stuff. But what they're wanting to get you to, to understand is, is they're going to ask you to estimate the y-intercept here in a second. And if we do that, if we think about that, if we go back, another 2, we're left at 1. There, another 2. And if we drop that by that, that would be 275, right? Well, I don't need to go by 2 anymore. Because if I went by 2, I'd be at negative 1. So now I need to go by 1. So it's only going to change by... 25 instead of by 50 there. So 25 less than that would be 250. Okay. So that's that's kind of how we're going to estimate it from the graph. So 250 is what your wire intercept is going to be. So calculate slope. Slope 25. Find an equation that gives the temperature gas mark. So um, F equals 25 G plus 250. Okay. Um, you could have used a couple more things for this. Find slope. Okay. Could have found slope. And I'm going to show you one other thing. So if we use point slope form, um, I'm going to pick this point, and that point is 3, 325. I'm going to use that point. I could use any of these points, but that's the point I'm going to use, okay? Uh, when you use point slope, you note that this is an X1, and there's a, a Y1, right? Yeah, that, that looked good there, so let me correct that. Y1. And we plug those in, so it would be Y minus 325 equals. 25x divided 
that's a positive. When you put it in, it'll be a minus, right? So whatever your ordered pairs are, when you're using the point slope form, they're going to change signs. You note that 325 was positive out here. It became negative there. So we're going to distribute, and that would be 25x minus 75. And then we're going to just add 325 to both sides. Okay, so that's y equals 25x plus. So if we do this, we're looking at 250, which is what we got. Okay. So <clears throat> point slope, the biggest thing is when you have an ordered pair and you plug it in for your, um, let me use this, for your y1 and your x1, because they're minuses, it's going to change the sign of the coordinate, okay? And if you ever pull it out of the equation, it's going to have to change as well. So let's look at, uh, yeah, mm, let's see. Yeah, that's good. That'll be good for part two. So section 1.5, part two video.